Hi there, it's Catherine. Welcome to Sisters for Fi, where we talk about topics related to money and motherhood. In this video, we are going to help you create an annual spending plan, which is a plan for your money for the next year. Now, most budgets fail, unfortunately, because of these reasons. One is unrealistic expectations. People tend to overestimate their income and underestimate their expenses, leading to a budget that is impossible to stick to. Two is the lack of discipline. Budgets fail because a lot of people do not have the discipline to stick to them. It can be difficult to resist temptation, to overspend because there are so many things to want. Everyone is trying to get you to buy something, advertising, marketing. The third reason most budgets fail is we don't track our expenses enough. Budgets require constant attention. And when people fail to track their expenses, they don't see where their money is going and they get off track very, very easily and quickly. It's absolutely important to keep an eye on spending habits and adjust that budget accordingly. The fourth reason most budgets fail is because of unexpected expenses. We are not planning enough for these unexpected expenses. And when we get an expense that we've never planned for, it can absolutely throw our budget off track. Now, whether this is a medical emergency, a car repair, or a home repair, these unexpected expenses can quickly add up and make it difficult to stick to your budget. The last reason your budget is failing is because of lack of flexibility. You need some buffer room in your budget for those things like your unexpected expenses. You might have different needs and wants, so you want a budget that's flexible and bends a little bit so that you can accommodate for those new things. Now, creating a realistic budget requires discipline, it requires attention, and it requires flexibility. What we are going to do is create a spending schedule or what is also called an annual budget or a spending plan. And a budget in this case is basically just assigning every dollar you own a job. And that dollar can be used to pay debt, it can be used to pay for your rent, it can be used to buy you new clothes. But we want to make sure that we are planning ahead when it comes to that money. So the new take on this budget is not going to be by month, but we are going to look at this from a yearly point of view so that you plan ahead when it comes to your expenses. So let's jump onto the spreadsheet and walk through that. Here is a view of our spreadsheet. You are going to notice something very different about this spreadsheet. It actually has the months already in it. So we are not doing this budget by the month. What we are going to do is actually create a spending schedule that looks at your expenses across all of the months. And what this allows you to do is to plan ahead with your expenses. Now, this budget spending schedule will need data from your past expenses. So you will need to pull some data from your credit cards, from your debit cards, so that you have a sense of the average expenses on certain categories. And it will also look at future expenses. What are you planning for? What are you saving up for? What are you looking forward to? The challenge with a lot of monthly budgets, it is a very short time frame and we are not accounting for some of our larger goals. We are not accounting for expenses that creep up on us. We are not accounting for things that could have been planned ahead. So let's dive deep into that to see what this looks like. You can grab a copy of this spreadsheet in the description and I do have some of the standard categories that most American families, average American families would be spending their money on from housing, transportation, food, personal utilities, children, debt, subscriptions, gifts, entertainment, and so forth. You'll also see a secondary category. So depending on your family, you might want to adjust these categories. You might add one, remove one, or so forth. If you are not going to use a certain category, just zero that out. Maybe you'll use it for the next year when you do this spending schedule again. Look at the top where your months are. 
you will see your months across January through December. Now you can certainly fill this budget out at any point in time because what you're going to see is that many of our expenses are fairly average and are fairly fixed. So we'll do that and you will also see some interesting totals here when you look at this from the holistic point of view. You will see your totals for how much you spend on home or your housing. You will see grand totals, yearly totals of how much you spend on transportation, food, personal, and so forth, as well as the monthly breakdown. Let's look at a sheet with some data on it. And in this case, I have filled out as much as I could in terms of expenses, standard expenses that a family of four might have. So I have here for home, a mortgage that is static, right? Most of the time, rent is static unless you renew a lease or something. But if you have a mortgage and unless you refinance, your rent or mortgage is pretty static for a few months. So that's something that's easy to enter. You might have property taxes that you don't pay for every month. It might come every quarter. So you want to be scheduling that out. Put that in place so that by the time March comes and it's due, you have money in place for that. You have your property insurance, which may only come once a year, an annual renewal, and maybe you're putting away money for maintenance as well. We'll also show you totals for what you're spending on this particular category for the home housing category. But you also see your total for the year. That's 22450 And that's a way for you to look at your expenses holistically for the year. $22,450 you are spending on housing or home. Now let's move on to transportation. Similar concept. We're breaking it down by car one, car two, the payments. Car insurance is $150 a month but what if you only pay every six months you might be able to save your money there when will that kind of payment come in so you want to schedule for that you have your average gas repairs across all of the months and there might be something that will come up something that you know is going to come up is your renewal for registration or license you also want to be scheduling that ahead so that you know when that's coming up and you have the funds or at least can see your money that's needed for that kind of expense move to food similarly food averaging per month could be high, could be low, depending on where you are with your groceries and restaurants. I also want to drill down further with sub subscription boxes as well as food delivery memberships. I want you to include those because those technically add up for your food budget. I also have a section here for coffee run. Now this is kind of specific to those that use your Starbucks app card or a Panera card or any of these loyalty cards where you pre-fill, put in money into so that you can use the app to pay for whatever you're buying. I want, just want you to see how much that adds up for your kind of expense. How much are you putting in each month for Starbucks? $25 a month doesn't seem like much, but when you look at it for the year, it's $300. Does that sit well with you? Is it okay that you're spending that much money on some of these food loyalty, rewards cards, members, membership, and so forth. So take a look at that to see what that looks like for you. I'll also go into personal, maybe some life insurance that get, gets paid once a, a year. So you're accounting for that. So when does it do April? That is a schedule that you need to be aware of. And most likely you will know when those things come up. So you want to be planning ahead for that. Not wait until the month comes and you're scrambling to find those extra dollars clothes, beauty, and so forth. So depending on, again, your schedule of hair and beauty, this is also about planning ahead, right? Like what if you want your hair done every month and you need to be budgeting $100 a month to get your hair, nails done, whatever. But at least you know you have a schedule in place for that. You know that's been budgeted and part of your plan. Of course, things change. You may spend more, spend less, but at least that's already something that is in your plan for spending your money. Next are your utilities. Most of these are monthly spend. So again, that's across all of the months, but you might find that you only paying water every quarter and here's your amount. So something that you are going to look at too. I, there's also a category for children. Now, depending on how many children you have, you might want to break this down. Some of these are broken down based on certain categories. So there's one for activities, allowance, childcare, 
toys, maybe birthdays, something that you want to keep track of is that if you're going to celebrate your child's birthday in April, you're going to need money for April or maybe the month before. So how can you schedule that ahead of time? Perhaps you have another birthday in October. How do you put that money in so that again, you're not scrambling or putting it on credit card and hoping to be able to pay it off at the end of the month. You also want to plan ahead. Again, this is a spending schedule. What type of expenses will you be looking for when it comes to summer? Is there summer camp that you need to pay for? Uh, think about also paying for babysitters on a monthly basis. Is that something that you are going to want to budget for and include in your spending plan? There are categories for your credit cards, your student loans. There's some things for subscriptions. Is having $180 of credit card fees worth it for you for the rewards that you're getting back? Or do you need to cut back on that and maybe downgrade to another card? Is Amazon Prime at $140 important to you? You also have gifts and again, breaking it down, holiday gifts, instead of you scrambling to get like a few hundred dollars at the end of December, you might want to plan ahead for that and put away $25 a month so that you have those funds at the end of the year. You have some entertainment here, streaming services and so forth. Again, this is about planning ahead. You want to go to a concert? That's some, that's a priority for you. You need to put that in for May or June, July, whenever those Concerts are your favorite band is coming up, so you have that in place. You have your health and medical, you're including your gym memberships, which is again, maybe every month for the year, spending 1200 on gym membership. That's important to you. That needs to be included in your spending plan for yourself or your spouse or other. You have pets, household. Um, you also want to be thinking about short-term savings, right? If your plan is to be able to go on a summer vacation in June and go on a winter vacation in December, how much money will that take? Now, scrambling to find $5,000 in June will probably be a little tough. So what we're going to do with all of these larger expenses is we're actually going to create a savings plan for those. Take a look at the timestamps in the description to fast forward to that if you want to jump to how to ensure that you have this money by the time June comes. You also have your long-term investment. So what are you saving up for? Is this part of your budget? Should it be part of your budget? How do you include it so that it's it's there? Have a plan for it. Have it on your schedule. So now, one of the things that you'll probably notice with this spending schedule is that we haven't even talked about income yet because as we mentioned earlier, one of the top ways budgets fail is because we overestimate our expenses. So right now, not knowing your income, I want you to look up some of the totals for your spending schedule. Are you already over your income? If that's the case, you need to revisit your spending schedule and figure out where you can cut out variable expenses as well as fixed expenses. Otherwise, no matter what you do, no matter how you adjust and fudge your numbers each month, you will always be at a deficit and you'll always struggle with your budget. So go back to your annual spending schedule and see what you need to change. So as you've entered your expenses for the year, you are likely seeing expenses split by fixed and variable expenses. Now, one of the things that many of us don't understand is that fixed expenses most likely take up a large chunk of our budget. Now, fixed expenses are these expenses that do not change month over month or year over year. And if you look at your spreadsheet, you'll see a lot of those, right? You see a lot of the same amounts. And what we want to do is start to see if we can lower those fixed expenses. Because if we can lower that chunk, that percentage of our money going to fixed expenses, we have more room for the other expenses in our budget. So a few things that you can do for your fixed expenses. You might want to refinance. These are good for your debts, any type of loans you have, you might want to do that. You want to negotiate. So any type of bill you have, insurance, see if you can negotiate for lower rates because that will get you savings quickly. You want to consolidate if you have some debt or other types of expenses that might be useful to consolidate. So you pay that one lump sum instead of different um, sums for different amounts for the month. You want to bundle. So this might be bundling your insurance, car, your housing, other types of insurance together so you save money there. You can also eliminate. So if you can eliminate a fixed expense, you can free up some money to be used for other things. And of course, the last option is to pay up front. 
Now, we saw in that schedule that for many of us, we're also playing things by month, right? Monthly payments. What if we pay up front? Will we be able to get a discount doing so? Can we ask for a discount when we pay up front? Very possible and very reasonable for us to say, you know what, I want to pay up front if you can give me a discount. And a lot of businesses will probably say, yes, I would love to do that because they want that cash on hand. So think about your fixed expenses and how you can reduce those right now so that you can gain back some of that money and you don't necessarily have to think about that expense for the rest of the year. Now, as we also went through the spreadsheet, you'll also start noticing your variable expenses. These are expenses that may change from month to month or year to year. And again, you've noticed that already because you have a schedule of your expenses. If you have a birthday coming up, that might mean that you will have an increase in your restaurant budget. You might have an increase in your gift budget. So planning ahead is actually one of the key things to ensure that those variable expenses do not eat up a good chunk of your budget. I also encourage you to pause before spending, doing any type of spending because that will again hit on your budget. And the last thing is just to always track your expenses. As long as you know where your money is going, you can make those changes quickly when it comes to buying, when it comes to spending money. So be diligent about tracking your expenses so that you know where your money is going. I hope this video has been helpful. The goal of creating your spending schedule is that so you can see where your money is going from month to month for the rest of the year. Now, it's also good because you can prioritize what you want to spend your money on. That might mean you cancel certain types of fixed expenses so you can move those funds towards something more fun or something that you want to do for your family. If this video has been helpful, please consider giving it a like and share it with a friend. Perhaps someone can gain value from creating their own spending schedule. And I would recommend checking out these two videos to help you with your finances. And I will see you next week for the next video. Thanks for tuning in and bye.